The Prussian Chancellor, Otto Bismarck, had a great reputation for diplomacy. He frequently victimized lesser men, lesser from a mechanical point of view, by insisting upon serving champagne throughout negotiations. Part of his secret was his ability to consume large amounts of alcohol without losing control of himself or the situation. The most accomplished use of surroundings I know of is in the work of evangelist Billy Graham. The large public places where he speaks are decorated with flowers and flags. His audience is primed by singing and other means until they slowly reach a crescendo for his own talk. Not to be forgotten in any discussion of nonverbal techniques is the use of technological innovations. The great advantages of videotape are that it can be edited for maximum effect and you cannot cross-examine a tape. The latter is especially important if your tape has the currently fashionable quasi-documentary style. The only way you can counter this is with another tape edited to show your point of view. Examples of the use of film abound. In the 1964 Democratic National Convention, a film was shown depicting a little girl playing with a flower, quickly followed by an atomic explosion. The film was directed against Barry Goldwater, the then Republican candidate. Advertising as a case study. In advertising, we find many of the techniques discussed above developed into a fine art. Especially instructive is advertising's almost complete reliance upon positive argument. Let us follow the foregoing outline and see to what extent advertising exemplifies each of the principles. To begin with, the advertiser must identify his market, break it down into its meaningful components, for example, geography, age, sex, and so on, and the objectives he hopes to achieve in his advertising. Second, he must identify his product with the dual hope of explaining the product in terms of the consumer's wants and needs, and second, emphasize the individuality or superiority of his product over rival products. It is important to note, however, that the latter must be done in a subtle manner. Gaining a sympathetic audience. In the case of advertising, this means creating a conscious or felt need for the product. The appeal to pity. This works in two ways in advertising, either directly for the product or service, or indirectly through pity for those who need the product. As an example of the first kind, we may note the Avis car rental commercials and advertisements call attention to the fact that Avis is only number two, Hertz is first, and as a result has to try harder. Here the appeal to pity is an appeal to the American sympathy for the underdog. As an example of the second kind, we may note advertisements for exercise programs for 90 pound weaklings and our sympathy for them is extended to any product attempting to help them cope with a cruel world. The appeal to authority. This has to be either the first or second most prominent device used in the world of advertising. Examples are numerous. One patent medicine designed to relieve headaches and various other assorted ills notes that it contains more of the ingredient most doctors recommend. Whatever that ingredient is, the mere fact that it is recommended by someone in a position of authority namely the doctor or doctors, makes this an appeal to authority. Several toothpastes have a kind of endorsement from the American Dental Association. For those who are too cynical about medical authority, or for those who are not sophisticated enough to care, there is always the vitamin-rich bread endorsed by the famous athlete. The appeal to tradition. There are several interesting variations on this theme. First, we all know the name of Napoleon's favorite brandy, and if the Napoleonic legend is something that appeals to you, then so will this brandy, which happens to be good in spite of Napoleon. Closer to home is Dolly Madison ice cream. Now, I do not know the exact connection between Dolly Madison, wife of President James Madison, and this product. It is true that Dolly Madison was the first to make ice cream in America, but what exactly does this imply? The latest and most impressive use and appeal to tradition, the attempt to show that one's product is consistent with a generally accepted ideal, is the sense at the same time a factual appeal. Detergents are now chemically produced so that they do not pollute our waters. The early advertising for this product was not only an appeal to a traditional value, but a very subtle way of noting the superiority of one product over another. Without some form of advertising, most of us would never know this fact. As a final example, I note that some products have a union label attached to them so that anyone who is favorably disposed to unions may choose that product over its rivals. 
current interest in buying American-made products is another example. Who would want to be accused of not supporting American goods? The appeal to precedent. The advertising counterpart to an appeal to precedent is the testimonial. Of course, the testimonial is also an appeal to authority. If I can present letters of gratitude or interviews expressing enthusiasm for a product by people who sincerely claim that the product fulfilled their needs, then I have established precedents for your thinking that the product will help you. Here it is important that the precedents be like the potential purchaser. A celebrity is an appeal to authority. That means that famous people are, are out in a strict appeal to precedent, and that the common man or the housewife are to be favored. For example, Ola Cassini no doubt sends his shirts to a top commercial laundry, or maybe he does not have to wear the same one twice. On the other hand, John Doe, who can only afford to own two dress shirts, has a wife who's interested in a bleach that will get the yellow stains out of his shirt collars. Hence, Mrs. Doe is more interested in a precedent, a testimonial, from Mrs. Smith or Mrs. Jones. Presenting the facts. In advertising, this means providing support for the contention that your product satisfies the needs that you have aroused in the previous part of your presentation. Statistics. What mother has not waited for her son or daughter to run home and say, look, mom, no cavities, or look, mom, 40% fewer cavities. There are several toothpastes that present documentary evidence of statistical surveys showing that their product is superior in preventing tooth decay. Again, we have seen the bandwagon approach used often in advertising. If more people use product A than any of its rivals, then clearly you should be using it too. We are also very familiar with the use of graphs. We know that Listerine kills more germs faster because we've actually seen the graph in action on television. There is an important variation on the theme of accentuating the positive. We may all view a product from a different point of view. Hence, if your product possesses a property that others think to be undesirable, you must reconstruct their worldview so that they come to see that what you lack is no shortcoming and that what you have is an asset. For example, for a long time, the Volkswagen did not have automatic transmission. Rather than admit that this was a shortcoming, they advertised from the point of view that standard gear shifts were really the greatest. And what man would want his car? to drive him rather than vice versa. Further, anyone who has ever used contact paper, which is very useful, knows that in time it stretches. Rather than admit this, the company advertised that its product did not shrink. It all depends on how you look at it. As a result of growing concern over the relationship between the presence of cholesterol and the occurrence of heart attacks and strokes, the beef industry has been busy both in trying to develop lower cholesterol beef and in some creative advertising. With regard to the latter, it has initiated an advertising campaign that has two dimensions. First, it emphasizes that one of the residual benefits of eating beef is greater strength because it contains protein, iron, and B vitamins. Moreover, it has initiated a series of ads stating that beef has only 76 milligrams of cholesterol in a three ounce serving, and that a healthy person can consume up to 300 milligrams a day. What the ads do not tell you is that the piece of beef in question was surgically trimmed with every iota of fat removed, and moreover that the average serving the consumer eats weighs five ounces, not three. The actual information provided by the beef industry is correct. What it leaves out is quite clearly crucial to the consumer. What is important for our purposes is that the advertising campaign instances the use of correct information to create or influence attitudes but these attitudes would be very different if other information were also available. It is not a matter of lying that interests us, but the presentation of information. Classification. The important thing in classifying your product or products is to make sure that the classification is laudatory. For example, in my neighborhood delicatessen, there are two sizes of pre-cooked chickens, large and extra large. There is no such entity as a small or medium chicken. Another example of this kind of classification is found in eggs. Did you know that it is impossible to get a small egg? The smallest egg sold commercially is sold as a medium egg. Definition. Suppose you were to read the word champagne on a bottle of wine. What would that tell you? To some people, it means a wine from the Champagne region of France. Technically, this is all that it means. Further, most of the wine from this region is sparkling, which means that bubbles form within it. Moreover, most of this wine is white. 
However, there are wines from the Champagne region that are red and some that are not sparkling. 